particles like these so fast and cool. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words. But no one can deny the fact that on the theory works. And we had this band structure before in the last couple of videos already. This was the band structure for a semiconductor. And for band structure of a semiconductor at room temperature, what you tend to find often is we have most of the electrons being in the lens band. We say that the lens band is partially filled or almost full because you can see this white line means it's not quite full, it's almost full. The reason why it's almost full is because some of these lens band electrons have had enough energy to jump into the conduction band, which means the ones which used to be in the conduction ba uh, lens band but now in the conduction band have gone there because they have had enough energy to jump over the forbidden energy gap, which is in the middle. And we also said if we increase temperature, we increase the amount that can jump from the lens band into the conduction band. Now, this top point, we have to talk about something quite important, that the one of the concepts you definitely need to understand to be able to appreciate semiconductors, and that is identify absence of electrons in nearly full band as holes. So nearly full band, so, so for example the semiconductor, as holes. So identify absence of electrons in nearly full band as holes, and recognize that both electrons and holes help, help to carry current. Alright, so let's for example say this is a part of a semiconductor, right? So silicon itself is a semiconductor. So this here is just a small snippet of a sort of lattice of a semiconductor. And this is the lattice, which means we have lots of these silicon atoms all in a row, one after the other. We said that their actual lens shells can overlap, right? They can overlap, which means that some of them will have less energy, some will have more energy, and the ones that have more energy are the ones which will, which will jump from the lens band into the conduction band. Right, so for example, let's say this one here. This one here has gained enough energy and will now jump into the conduction band. So what's going to happen is it is going to move up and it's going to be in the conduction band. Right, so it's left, now it's here. So now it can float around it either, either way, up or down, and it's in the conduction band. But what happened is where this one used to be, we used to have everything being equal, right? You have to have, we used to have these two being shared. But now that one of the actual electrons has left, what it can tend to find is a slight positive hole. Right? So we often just draw it like this, slight positive hole, because now one will have slightly less electrons than beforehand. Beforehand, both were sharing equal amounts of electrons. Now there's slightly less electrons than proton energy, not, not energy, but, but uh, proton attraction. So we have a bit more plus than minus, which means we draw that extra bit of plus of just making a, a positive hole. It's not actually the charge overall, it's still neutral. It's still neutral. But because this electron has left and it's now in a conduction band, this means that this part of the actual lattice is slightly more positive than it was beforehand. And what that means is, what you're going to see now, what will happen now, is for example, we're going to have, we're going to apply energy, we're going to apply a voltage to this whole thing, right? If we have no voltage, that means these electrons will just move as they want. The conduction band electrons will move whatever way they want to. It will move this way, or that way, or that way. It will be completely up to them in terms of what direction they're moving at, right? Completely random. But if you apply a voltage, then it'll be all be different, right? So for example, we say, okay, this over here is your negative terminal, and over here is your positive terminal. And because these guys are electrons, and electrons are negatively charged, that means they're going to be attracted to the positive end, right? Electrons are negatively charged, which means this electron in the conduction shell will not move any direction, it will move into this direction, it will move towards the positive. As the conduction electrons conduct electricity by moving from negative to the positive. And the interesting part is here, now that if you apply the voltage, what will happen is elect some of these electrons in the actual lens shell, what they will do is they won't be in the conduction shell, but what they'll do is, for example, let's say this one here. This one will jump from here and go into the position of the positive hole right? because it's also attracted to the positive. So it's going to be attracted and it's going to go in the same direction. Right? So the electron has moved and is now here. But now where this electron used to be, we have a positive hole because there's more positive and negative in that area. 
And now same thing happens again. We have another electron moving. So this electron now is attracted to the positive hole. And this electron will move and go where the actual electron used to be, uh, where the positive hole used to be. So now this electron is going to be here. And where it used to be is a positive hole. And this will happen over and over again, right? So now this electron is attracted to the positive hole, this one here, and it will move and take place, combine that positive hole to move in that location. And where it used to be is a positive hole. So what you can find is the conduction band electrons, they're all moving from the negative to positive, that's expected, but so too are some of the valence band electrons. So some of these electrons, which are actually a valence band, which are these ones here, are also going to be moving this direction. Right? So your valence band electrons are moving this direction as well. And the reason why that's possible is because of these positive holes which were created when the electrons left the valence band and went to conduction band. Because these positive holes are making some of the electrons go from one to next into towards the direction of the positive terminal. And that means it's also conducting electricity. But sometimes we don't say that the electrons, the valence band electrons are going this way. But what we say instead is we say that the positive holes are moving in the opposite direction. Positive holes. And that makes sense. If you thought about where we started, we started somewhere here. Right? The first hole was here. But then the electrons always jump from there, this direction. So the electrons always jumped to fill the hole. So it started here, the hole, but now it's over here. And if we continue the whole thing, we'd find that the positive hole keeps moving in this direction. But what's actually happening is electrons are jumping in the opposite direction. They're filling the hole, but as they are filling the hole, they're leaving a hole in the back, right? which means it's, it seems like the positive holes are moving in this direction. But what, what's actually happening is the electrons are moving in the opposite direction, and it makes positive holes in towards the left. But the actual point says, itself says, identify absence of electrons in nearly full band as holes, and recognize that both electrons and holes help to carry current. So in this case, what it means is your conduction electrons, these ones here, these ones are carrying current, that makes sense. Uh, your current is your movement of negative charge from negative to positive, and that makes sense, but also the opposite. So even in the valence shell, we have your positive holes, which are making it possible for electrons to move as well. Right? They're moving from from negative to positive because of these positive holes. So both the positive holes and your conduction electrons are helping to carry current. That's basically what this means. These positive holes are really important because the second way that we can conduct electricity, that which often only happens in a semiconductor. It also says identify the absence of electrons in a nearly full band as holes. So nearly full band was often found in semiconductors and if we look at conductors or insulators, right? Conductors, for example, where they have all of their actual electrons be free electrons. So in a conductor, we don't have holes appearing. We don't have that happening in conductors. And we also often don't happen don't have that happen in insulators. We can make it happen in insulators, but we have to put in so much energy, so much temperature, that by the time that we have some positive holes being created, the whole structure of the insulator is already destroyed. Right? We would melt the plastic. So usually we find your holes, not in conductors or insulators, we find them in your semiconductors. And the example would have been silicon or germanium. These are your two famous semiconductors. And so yeah, we carry current both for these conduction electrons, moving from negative to positive, and from the actual holes, moving the opposite direction from positive to negative. But as the holes are moving, what's actually happening is electrons are moving in are taking place, always jumping from one of the holes to the next. And by doing so, they create their own, they leave their own hole. And that's why the holes are actually moving from positive to negative, because electrons are moving from negative to positive. But what you should know is both the holes and the conduction electrons are helping to carry current. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.